Yeah, Uncle Ralph, you already know what it is. You know what you're doing. Video Music Box, I'm here. Real fans, real talk, and that's the way it's going down. Don't go nowhere. Fix your face. They ain't going nowhere. Ha! Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom for the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, real talk.com got it. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor, tell him about. Bobby sent ya from spring to winter. Tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Welcome back. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm just happy to be here. And, you know, it's an honor always to see you guys. Before before we jump into into the show, though, we do want to take a, a quick moment of silence for uh, Stuart Scott, who uh, recently passed away. So we're just going to take a quick moment real quick. All right. We want to send our condolences once again to all of the family, friends, loved ones, fans, supporters. Stuart Scott, one of the greatest analysts uh, that I that I, I've ever seen on, on TV, you know, had that big fight with with cancer, came back. He got the SB award, gave one of the most heartfelt speeches. Um, but you know, again, he lost. He, he did wind up losing the fight ultimately. But we want to send our condolences to him. With that being said, we do have. I, I am wearing a little bit of black for out of respect for. Uh, well, I got the tie on and everything for uh, out of respect for Stuart Scott, famous for the catchphrase, uh, "Cooler than the other side of the pillow," and nobody was cooler than him out there on the set. Um, but we do have the guest, uh, Haran. Uh, what's been going on since the last time you were on Real Fans Real Talk? Oh man, what was that? Over a year ago now, right? It's, it's been uh, a while. A lot, of, a lot of things have been going on. Um, uh, still playing ball, you know, still doing my ball thing. Um, uh, also, right now I'm uh, having an event called Balling for Peace, and it's going to be January 24th at Baruch College. Um, it's going to go on from uh, 5 to 8, and we have several celebrities coming out there, even the guy who's going to be coming here a little bit later, Cortez. And, um, you know, I, I'm very excited about it. You know, I just want to, uh, you know, the community to get aware of all the senseless violence that's been going on in the community and things like that. And just, I want to do something positive, you know, um, for, for, for our people here in New York. And just, you know, have everybody just get a sense of happiness right now, you know, in the state of what's going on and everywhere else, you know. So that's, you know, I wanted to put that out there. And then uh, also, it's a ton of different things, man, that's going on. I have a, a sneaker deal now. With a sneaker company called Ectio. That I hope you brought the shoes. You you, you said you was gonna bring a pair for for me and Stack, man. I hope you brought our sneakers because we've been looking forward to that. So uh, you know, I don't want to I don't want to cause no drama, but you know, I'm just saying it's early in the show. You, you know, we still got a good 55 minutes left. Uh -huh. So I'm just going I'm just going you know close my eyes and and hopefully they'll pop up magically before we get off the air live right now because I have seen the sneakers and the sneakers are dope. Some signed so, size 12s. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Because okay. okay. no, we're gonna put a pair on the set anyway. You see, if okay, you look back, sure. you see what we got back here anyway. Oh, get, yeah, okay. Come on, you yeah, see how yeah, we man. do. You know the family got to show that love. So so. You know, I mean, I'm aware of my pair, but I'm just, you know, but Mark's pair, you can, you can put his back there on the, on the set. Mine, I'm going to wear mine, especially when I get back to bowling, um, because, again, myself and the stat, man, we will be in the building, you know, for, for bowling for peace, because, you know, we always try to support Ron with whatever he's doing, and it's for a good cause, so you, you, you got to love that. You know, a couple of a couple of people in the building that, that, that you said will be, and including Cortez, and, and who else is it? Confirm. We have uh, Tara from uh, Love and Hip Hop, and she going through some things right now. So somebody might be able to scoop or something if yeah, you know if you you know. The list go, it's, it's a ton of people. I don't want to leave people out. We got my man, main man Graf. Okay. Uh, Queens. Queens. You know, have you know, I rock out with them, him hard body. Um, Halito from uh, The Wire. 
We have... Uh, okay, okay. Wait, now, nah, hold on. Wait a minute. That's the one that got slapped up? <laughs> by his mama when she was trying to put him back out and he tried to make himself yeah, drunk? Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, that's, my, yeah. that's my boy, though. <laughs> but all right. Uh, we got Mac Wiles. Um, okay. Oh, man. Mr. Let's, Hennessy. Yeah. Mr. Hennessy. We got another battle rapper. We got Murder Mook, you know, um, who, who just came off that uh, total slaughter when he, he battled Loaded Lux. You know, he just, he just came off that win okay. versus Loaded Lux. You know, and um, oh man, the list is, is I yeah, I don't want to leave nobody off. You know, um, but um, yeah, it's gonna be a, a nice, fun yeah, filled event. Uh, Rihanna or any other, you know, the females that I might, you know. Uh, Tiana, Tiana, Tiana Taylor. You like Tiana Taylor? Yeah. Well, she was shuffle, but but he just he just went out to Cleveland, so he might have a chance, brother. Yeah. You know, once you get traded, that's it, it's over. Yeah. You, know, you gotta move on to the to the next person. So we There's still probably nothing in Cleveland go. either, man. I don't know what's out there, man. But exactly. So she like she like New York guys anyways, you know, you, you know, so you might have a chance. That man, I know you you know, you've been looking, so you might be able to get that. That's the if you if y'all don't know Tiana Taylor, you gotta do is watch uh Medea's uh, Big Happy Family. Byron <laughs> That was her. So if you if y'all don't know who she y'all should know who she is, but just in case you don't but it sounds like it's going to be a whole lot of people. Plus, we're going to be in the building. We're probably going to be, you know, just the biggest celebrities, you know, out there on the set. So we're going to go out there and show our love. And then I might, if if Haran give me the sneakers today, I'm definitely balling. Okay. Now, if he don't, if he don't need the sneakers, I, I'm going to be on strike. I'm going to still go and support, but I'm going to be on strike. I ain't going to get in the game. I don't want to showcase all my skills in one day, you know, in one game. Because I'll probably be the MVP, drop like 40 points, have 65 <laughs> rebounds, and, and 17 assists. And wow. I'm going to still because I ain't, you know, I'm going to be lazy on defense. But okay. That's how I do, though. All you know? right. Okay. I, I mean, you got to, you know, got to do what you got to do out there, man. You know, um. So, you know, I love the l wishful thinking right now. And, um, Listen, we, we you do your Dane James Harden there. You don't play defense. Exactly. Nah, I don't play defense. I mean, I said one still, that's good enough. That's yeah, that, good. that's, that's pretty good. That's still pretty good. On that's pretty basis. good. That, that and is it, true. And that's a celebrity game, too. So, I'm, you know, I don't want to outshine all of the celebrities. That's I mean, you got to be, be, you know, you got to be a little bit cordial about that and exactly. not make everyone look bad, obviously. Yeah, like, that's rude. You know, if I just go out there and just show up, then they know we got a sports show, they're going to think Haran rigged it, you know, for me to come yeah. out there and ball out. But it's all good, man. You know, what I, what I need to talk to you about, Haran, actually, and this, is, this concerns you and Statman, okay. because every time, you know, we speak, whether it be in the studio or if we come out to one of your events, you know, we talk about the, the New York Knickerbockers. And we have. I see how you put your head down right now. See what that, I don't. I don't mean to make you guys do that because that's wrong. That makes me uncomfortable All right. talking about. But what I, what I want to say to you is now, if do you look at the situation of the New York Knicks? They got you know Phil Jackson. You guys wanted him. You got Derek Fisher. He had the triangle offense. Melo stayed. And right now, you guys are worse than the Philadelphia 76ers. So, Haran, what's up? We're taking a page out of the Philadelphia 76ers. Are you play. The I love, we're taking a page out of the Sixers playbook. Because okay. what's basically happening is we're tanking the season. Mm -hmm. We're looking for draft picks. We're freeing up cap space. You have Rondo, uh, Lamarcus Aldridge, and Marcus Saul, some notable key free agents next season. And we, and we might get two of those to join uh, so Carmelo right now, Anthony so right plus now a rookie. It's, it's lose at all costs now because we actually have a fan mail question. Gary, who is from Brooklyn, shout out to everybody in Brooklyn. We out here tonight. And Gary writes in, do you guys consider the Knicks shutting down Carmelo Anthony for the season as a form of tanking? So, Haran, so, you know, you guys are the Knicks fans on the panel. You guys are still supporting the Knicks and you're trying to, you know, keep the keep the faith and the hope alive. Please talk to Gary and answer what's going on. What, like, is that a form of tanking? I I, I believe um, if you shut down Carmelo, you're just giving up. You know, I think that the uh, or you know they don't want Carmelo out there out of respect going you know a uh, hundred and ten percent, and we don't have a team out there who who's worthy of him, you know, of even making the playoffs right How now. How much money is he getting paid for this season? A uh, couple million. That's a couple. couple. I think couple he's getting paid million. a lot of millions couple, this 20, season. Something to be million. Out. You know, I thought it was you know you play. I mean, and because you, you you play. Yes. You're, you you know you're a baller. You're yeah. professional. I thought it was, unless you literally, you know, Can't physically play. cannot play, you're supposed to have that heart and go out and play. That's what I always thought it was. I, I would I would personally go out there and play, you know, I, and I and, think, but but and then it's, call you out it's, it's and, also. It's you on the squad because right. they're yeah. not doing too well right now. You know, there's a lot of guys going in and out. You know, they, they just got rid of Shumpin and, and J.R. Smith. Now yeah. they, they, they waved Dallin Bay. I don't know what that was about because he was actually playing decent. Well, but basketball. if if. if 
if they kept them another day, then they, they would have, have to. Paid them the whole yeah, salary. the whole. Well, they I mean, it's only for this one yeah, year. Yeah, for one year, they could have kept them. They was gonna get rid of him next season anyway, so they could have just kept him. He was actually playing, playing. decent. It wasn't even like it was that much. Once of a again, drop another form of chill. tanking because you. Yeah, I guess this year or not, it's still you know their 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 main goal is to lose right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something that they were doing without trying before. <laughs> now they're actually <laughs> trying to lose. So now it's okay and because they're actually the, trying the, to lose. The analogy with uh, I heard the analogy with as far as Carmelo Anthony's question, it's like when you have a car in the winter and you're not getting repairs because he does, you know, have some lagging injuries. It's, it's, the analogy was get the repairs done now. That way you have a hot whip for the summer. So, and, I mean, you know, him, him, break, him, him resting would basically be a good thing because next season he'll be healthy as opposed to him going hard and his injury possibly getting worse and then having a, a, a Derrick Rhodes type of situation where he's, you know, missing part of next year. So yeah. I, I definitely don't uh, – I. I mean, I don't like the fact that the Knicks are losing. None of the Knicks fans out there do. Uh, but next season is looking very promising. As far as the free agents that I mentioned, it is Phil Jackson, the Zen master. He's going to be able to convince some of those names to come to the Knicks just because of his name. And it's not like Carmelo Anthony isn't a very talented player. That's going once you have one big name on your team, it's going to attack uh, attract free agents. Then you have New York. The fact that it's the New York market, the biggest market in the world, that's going to attract players uh, as far as um, money that they'll be making aside from their salary playing in New York. So. The next year is looking promising. I know when you're a losing team like the Knicks or the Mets, it's always looking forward to next year, and we're getting used to that and everything. I understand that, but at the same time, you know, with, with a high draft pick, well, we'll get we'll get one of those boys from Kentucky, maybe somebody else, or we'll, uh, you know, uh, aside from that, we got the. I'm looking forward to free agency next year. And so you know what's ironic is that you know a couple of last last year I believe one of the, one of our shot for shot questions was actually who was going to finish with the worst record, the Lakers or the Knicks, and I you know at that point I still I said it was the Knicks. I think now it's looking even more guaranteed that it is going to be the Knicks now and they are you know they, and they're doing what they're doing in the Eastern Conference yeah. I mean it's just it's bad out there for the Knicks and then, you know what and I apologize I shouldn't even be bringing that kind of stuff up with you guys I know we're right we're talking about balling for peace today <laughs> and they're talking about balling for draft picks right now in New York <laughs> so I do apologize fellas but I needed to get that off my chest and get that out you know out of my system to kind of just feel you know see where you guys were with that and, and how you felt about the whole Knicks situation <laughs> because Saron I know yeah. we hadn't spoke about that in a while yeah. last time you had like play Aspirations we, we, for the well, we, we were in the and, playoffs and at whatnot, that time. We were yeah. number two, we were number two t seed. Yeah. In, uh, but y'all didn't uh, win that you know, season either. <laughs> so I'm just. I, I, I do remember on our interview, I did ask you the question. Yeah. Who do you, I mean, you can't help with the Knicks bias. At that time, we were second yeah. in the Eastern Conference. We beat the Heat nicely in the regular season that year, but I mean, the things happen. We we got a little while to go before we end up uh, being champions. We'll probably have a bigger. Uh, a, a nice big three of our own uh, come next year with a couple of those Rondo free agents that I mentioned. Rondo, we're des we're starving for a point guard. So uh, I actually think uh, I think Calderon? Calderon's playing yeah. pretty well, man. But he just had nobody to pass the ball to, and Tim Hardaway Jr. hasn't been. You know, they they're pitting all the. Uh, they're giving everything out to him. You know, they they traded Iman, they traded yeah. J.R. Smith. I mean, he has to do. He has to produce. He has to. You know. Do something. What you were yeah. hoping for a trip that Tim Hardaway Jr. would get some more burn, but yeah. I mean, yeah. well, I didn't want to trade Shumper too. I, <laughs> yeah. I wanted him to yeah. keep Shumper. That's the defense right there. Yeah, man. You know, but now what I found was funny is we might have to start calling the Cavs the Cavs Knicks now, as you gave the Denver Nuggets the Denver Knicks because all the players, former Nick players that are on the Cavs now, with uh, with, with Smith and and, and Shumper, and then now they bring over Moscow. You know, yesterday we might have to start calling them the Cavs Knicks yeah. because I. I don't know what, what's or the going Nicoliers. on. Or the Nicoliers. Or the Nicoliers, yeah, whichever, whichever one you know you like you like best. But I think the Nicoliers sounds <laughs> that sounds good. All right, we're gonna go with that. We're gonna call them the Nicoliers for now on. But um, Nick, they, it sounded better, but I don't know. I Plus, mean, I'm just, not rooting for the Cavs. Yeah, so it just, just works. So yeah. 
But, but it is what it is. I do think that Moscow to the Cavs is going to be a good thing, you know, just from the standpoint of uh, David Blatt was actually his coach on the Russian national team. So I think that is going to be a plus and that will actually help them out because they definitely need some, some size because losing Varejao, who wasn't, you know, playing that great this season to begin with, but you know, I, I think it is it is a, a good sign for the uh, the Cavaliers. All right. Well, we should have uh, Cortez. Uh, I believe he's in the building. We should have him in. Murder Afghan Cortez. <laughs> we should have him on uh, shortly. Um, and but the NFL playoffs are in full effect. The yes. Dallas Cowgirls did advance on 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 a, on a, on, a, on a call that we shall not speak of. Some nonsense that yep. should have been a call but wasn't a call. But it, it's all good. They, 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 you know what? And which the crazy thing is, they may even catch another break if, you know, if they if they can't. Um, Aaron Rodgers is not at one hundred percent this week in Green Bay, so they may actually catch another break and make it to the NFC uh, Championship game, which kind of which kind of sucks. But you know, it, it is the Cowboys. But I'm actually happy because on the on the other side of that, the Ravens are. You know they did advance and uh, they did they did beat the Steelers, which I, I love to beat them in Pittsburgh. Made me feel good. H two O, who do you got so far in the NFL playoffs? Um, my Bears are out. My, <laughs> well, they've been out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so been you out. might as well give up that dream. Um, and I'm actually Jay Cutler. I'm riding. I'm riding out with uh Peyton. I think he uh he he's gonna redeem himself from that horrible <laughs> experience last year. <laughs> And um, he's going to come back and um, hopefully, you know, he rides off in the sunset after he went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, well. Good uh, luck. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that one because he has to, to, to go through uh, Foxborough in order to make it to the Super Bowl. Well, so you're saying your Ravens are going to lose then? Listen. Because they, they do well, have to play Tom Brady. He, he, did lose, he did lose to the Ravens two years ago. He had the Ravens won the Super Bowl. That's he did lose thing. to the Ravens. So either way, it's going to be a rough road for, for Peyton. Um, but I, I just don't think it's going to be Peyton. I don't think the Broncos are, are going back to the Super Bowl this year. Either way, um, definitely not if they go to have to go to Foxborough and play. But if they have to play the, the, the Ravens either, I mean, you see what they did. They got they got Peyton's number. The Terrell Suggs, Haloti Nada, and those guys on, on that Ravens front line, you know, they are amazing. And they can, they can get to Peyton. And I just, I'm not sure about the health just yet. I know they had that week off, so guys had a chance to come back. But the way that the Broncos ended off the season was unlikely of a Peyton Manning-led team where, you know, the run was featured a, a lot more. They were heavily going to the run. You know, C.J. Anderson played very well. But with them going to the run as much and kind of straying away from the pass, it just, you know, gave me signs that they weren't going to be the team to beat anymore in the, in the AFC. We also have uh, Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers dealing with the calf injury. Let's switch over to the NFC. With that calf injury, that's kind of giving the Cowgirls a little bit better of a chance. Well, what do you make of that, trip? Yeah, I, I would have to agree. You know, I mean, they, they, they are getting very fortunate this, this postseason. Um, and I, I thought it would be a good game either way because the Cow, Cowgirls are playing some, some good football right now. I do have to tip my hat to them. But, you know, they are playing, you know, a, a very good team in Lambeau Field, which is, is rough. I mean, Eli did it, you know, the year the Giants won. But I don't know if the Cowgirls can do that if Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is healthy. Um, Haran, do, what do you think? You think that the, the Cowgirls do have a chance? No way. <laughs> now, if, if Aaron Rodgers is not 100%. Uh, he, he will be 100% come uh, come Sunday, right? So they play on Sunday, not Saturday game. Uh, he, he did. He was Sunday. fortunate enough to have the bye week. Yeah. The calf injury is a, a lagging injury. Two to three weeks. It's going to be two weeks since his last game. But, I mean, we saw the day he got in, he uh, re-injured it he a little back, bit. Yeah. He came back in. He played. But not. he didn't look too as sharp mm -hmm. as, as – uh, and we have uh, – the DeMarco Murray, who could very well be the X factor in this one, he's just—I mean, they—they they have a great passing game as it is, but with DeMarco Murray there, that's a one-two punch there on the offense. Do you think Green Bay's defense will put up there? And see, that's that's kind of rough. And on top of that, see, I'm not sure about DeMarco Murray's hand because I know he did re-injure it a little bit last week, so I think it's going to be kind of contingent on, on on his hand. But if DeMarco Murray can go, I think he's still going to do his numbers. He's, he's going to rush for over 100 yards, you know, and, and they're still going to going to play a good game. It's, I think, honestly, I think it's, it's all lies on Aaron Rodgers and what he does out there. If Aaron Rodgers is 110%, the, the, the Packers will win that game. And if he's not, then the Cowgirls have a chance of winning. I think they have no chance. 
not not in the uh, the cold weather. Green Bay, you know, uh, has Green Bay even lost at home this year? Well, they had they they did lose lose at home, but it wasn't to the Cowgirls. So I, I mean, listen, like I said, if Aaron Rodgers is healthy, if he goes, I know he didn't practice uh, on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday he didn't practice. He was supposed to be practicing today. I don't know, but if he comes into that game and he's 100 percent in the playoffs in Lambeau Field, yeah. the Packers will win that game. All right, we got some more NFL playoffs, uh, but before we do that, we have Brooklyn's own, the one and only Cortez in the building. We're going to have him uh, come on to the program. That's well, right. welcome to the program, Cortez. What's going on? Fresh off the, fresh off the arcane battle yeah. dropping. You know, I checked yeah, that out yesterday, you What's know. Going on? Eight. Good, you already know, bro. All right. It's First comfortable of all, up here. Oh, this yeah. is good right here. I mean, like listen, I like we, we brought the leather sheets out for you, yeah. man. We, we you know we was going to have battle rap royalty in it's here. It's a different life. So we, 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 had, we had to bring, bring, bring the good stuff out, you know. Mm. Um... First of all, you know, again, thanks for thanks for coming on on to the show. Pleasure. I did. If you guys if you guys haven't already, you know, checked out his latest battle, the Arcane battle, it, it did just drop. That was on a uh, KOTD. Um, one thing I will say, Court says, is I feel like you do not get the respect that you deserve Man. in battle rap, and. Sometimes I feel like I'm biased because I'm from Brooklyn and I'm mm -hmm. always going to support who's coming out of Brooklyn. But then when I actually see the, you know, the comparison to other battle rappers and, and you know, just everything, the combination of just performance, lyrics, you know, delivery and whatnot. And there is a huge gap between you and a lot of other battle rappers that are considered top tier. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's in one, you know, especially, and, I, and I, I really just dislike this ass. I just don't think he's good at all. <laughs> you know, I think he's overpraised for no reason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that whole rift that y'all had going back and forth, and then I honestly felt like you watched him in that battle. Killed him. And I know... I, it's a different crowd when you on King of the Dot and Grind Time, so they're always gonna support Disaster and those kind of battle rappers. Mm -hmm. And if you're on like the URL side, it's gonna still be a different opinion. But just actually watching the battle, I thought you completely destroyed him, yeah. which I think in in a lot of your battles, even going back to you know Hitman Holla, and I felt like you destroyed him. And you know it, fans are always gonna be biased and, and mm -hmm. going and going back and forth. But I do, I honestly don't think that you get enough respect mm -hmm. for what you do on that stage. Yeah. I mean. It, it's becoming a, a a broken record. Like everyone's realizing it, and it's just like I just told myself like maybe it was just meant for me to go harder. So that's what I did. And yes, I will so say 2014. Like, yeah, you like I went, showed improved. <clears throat> yeah, so it was just a matter of all right, maybe it's just y'all not gonna give me the layup like y'all gonna give everybody else. All right, boom, I gotta run a whole play and you know what I mean, post up and, and get the rebound and get the, right, if I gotta do that, then I gotta do that. If I gotta wear more hats, then it's more of a challenge to me. I can rap, yeah. I know that, you know what I'm mean? So that doesn't bother me anymore. It's just a matter of, I want that respect. It's like what Mitch said, remember Mitch was like, yo, I got money, you know what I mean? I I I I, I had all the girls, but like, if I leave, like, are they gonna love me? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, And it's like, that's how I kind of feel with it. I'm just like, yo, they not appreciating everything yet. And it's like, that's what pushes me more, you know? So hopefully this year, you definitely went hard you know? in 2014. So I'm yeah. looking at, first of all, can you can you tell the fans, right? Because we live right now, mm -hmm. right? Can you tell the fans who's next? Can you do that right um, here on Real Fans Real Talk? There's a new, there's a new cat. Um, He was just on the UFF. His name is Excel. Okay. He's pretty dope. Um. He's he he's got a big buzz in Boston, so I just worked out like a concert thing with this. Not a league, but I'm gonna take him. But the next big name, I can't say right now. I'll just tell you this though. Right before I got here, URL, I just got off the phone with URL, and I just got off the phone with another big card that's about to come out. So, all right, within a week, you have to, so you we have to get him to tell us off the record because I want to know off. The I'll record. tell you off the record. All right, you cool, know what cool. I mean? Cool. I just don't want to put it out there and then it doesn't go through. You I feel got what I'm you. saying? So, put the pressure on him. Drop the check. I got Everybody's you. struggling after Christmas. Send a check. <laughs> I tell you what, what it is. You know, but um, you know, I I feel like it's a blessing. You know, you gotta take you gotta take the good with the bad. You know, and um, and growing up in New York City, just in Brooklyn, it's a million rappers, a million. So just for me to be noticed and 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 respected, you know, like I feel like okay, I've beaten a lot of the odds already. You know, so it's just uh, if I gotta go hard, I gotta go harder. That's what it is. That was actually going to be one of my uh, next questions, taking a step back. Like, I'm sure you just started battle rapping, like, you know, like a lot of people, just with friends. And then, mm -hmm. you know, can you tell us a little bit about your start and when you realized 
that this is definitely what you want to do and you're going to go hard and full full time with it. I mean the crazy the crazy thing about it is it just happens. Like and I always think hip hop or music or anybody that's successful it just happens like that. Like it has to be natural or organic. It's like hip hop was started in the in the parks and then house parties and then all of a sudden videos and it blew up and it just happened and then it became a multi-billion dollar industry mm -hmm. and I felt like Battle rap was always a part of hip hop. It was just that lane wasn't created yet. They didn't know how to monetize it. And I think at that time, you had World Star, you had This Is 50, you had YouTube, like 2006, 2007, where everything started changing from DVDs to the internet. And it was more like people were clicking the battles. You would see they get a lot of views. And it was just at the right place at the right time, you know? Um, I, I, I did a showcase at the Pyramid. Um, there was a big cipher outside, a lot of notable names, people that are popping now, but before when nobody was popping and the cipher was crazy and this dude just pulled me to the side, I was like, you ever did Fight Club? I said, no, I heard of it. You know, it was with Sirius Jones and, and Jen. I heard of it. And he said, come down for the tryouts. And I went in there and I just caught crazy buzz off of it, but none of the footage ever hit television. So people knew, yo, there's this kid Cortez from Brooklyn. He's nice. They didn't know if I was Spanish. They didn't know I was black. They didn't know. They just knew this kid from Cortez. <laughs> so, you know, I was getting called for little things in the city here and there. But I was really mostly known for the music because I won a lot of, like, open mic showcases in New York. Then I get called one day for Lux to go to the Lions nice, Den. Okay, and nice. I battle Newborn. No, I battle Newborn okay. in a barbershop. First time I meet Mook, I meet Rex, I meet all of them. So when they like Cortez and I come in and play, they just looking at me like, and I just told Moog, I said, yo, you gonna remember me from this day. And I went crazy. And from there, dudes was like, oh nah, fuck with him. You know what I mean? Like we cool with him. And then from there, just put in my word, uh, grind time call. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <friends talk>, yeah. <laughs> That's right, y'all better recognize it. Yeah, yeah. It's Cortez. Thank you for joining us on our last episode of <laughs> Talk. <laughs> My bad, but 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 you know it it just became organic, and I think that's that's why the fans fell in love with it because everybody was just battle rapping at the same. Everybody was nice; they had their own styles, and I was just a part of it. Like and and like I said, I just when I noticed it and I seen how big it was going, I had to get motivated. I was like, "Yo, this is it. This is what I have to do." And now, five years later, six years later, that's been consistent. Millions of views on each battle, traveling the world. The world, like that's crazy from something I used to just do in the barbershop. So it's like the money is good and it's just we, we're making our own lane. Look at the BT Awards this year. All the ciphers, people watch the BT Awards for the ciphers. All the ciphers that were hot this year had battle rappers in it. We were the best lyricists in all three, four of the ciphers. And it's just showing like we're keeping lyrics alive. Like you still gotta have some substance, some, 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 you know, substance to your pen. And who? Best Rap. and worst battle rapper in the BT cipher. The worst was Sharon, by far, by far. Sharon was you, terrible. Even uh, Couture. Yeah, Sharon was worse than Couture. Sharon was worse than Couture, and um, the best. I have to say Mook. I have to say Mook. Even with all the stuff we've been through, I have to say him because yeah, he stole the show. He went there, he stole the show, and he made everybody stand up in the seats, and he didn't care. He went for his. So you know, props to him. Well, there's a huge name like Eminem that started in battle rapping before there was, it, it, it's a lot bigger now than it was then, obviously, with the, with the internet and everything. Do you think that a big name like that will ever come back, considering the fact that um, it's growing? Well, you know, Eminem did the reality show with us, and he sponsored it, and he watches everything. Mm -hmm. So just for that, we know he pays attention. Will they let him do it? I don't know, bro. Like, he's, that's, that's now, is, yeah, is, like. Is he, like, there with you guys, or is he kind of, uh, like, it's his I, I personally never met Eminem, but he backed the whole show. Like, it was his reality show. Yeah. And, you know, it was his promo behind it. All the perks was there. Rolling Stone did an issue on it. Like, that. that's crazy. Like, you know, only only with his type of approval you'll get all that. So, you know, Maybe we got the back from something, from well, you know, they're going to steal my idea, but. The, the winner of, like, a tournament gets to battle Eminem. See, that's the thing about it. Like, now it's at the point where certain names, we're getting booked to the point where it's like, yo, this is our lane. You're not going to come in. Like, Cassidy. Cassidy just yeah. battled Disaster. Mm -hmm. Cassidy got 250K. That's crazy. For, for But he's got a two-battle contract. He got that. 
if he would have lost to disaster, yeah. nobody else would get booked like that because we've beaten cannabis destroyed. Yeah. Anybody that's tried to come back has gotten destroyed by yeah. us. Yeah. Cassidy was the only one, and honestly, Cassidy can lose. Like he yeah. can get killed. Like well, he, he just because he, he it was the was matchup. Bad. Yeah, I, like I, I he did, he yeah. wasn't impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It was the guy, other guy was just worse than he was. Yeah. You know, so I think if he battled anybody from URL, would have been oh, yeah, it would have yeah, been yeah. it would have been a nightmare yeah. for him. So like somebody like Eminem, of course. But are they going to do a tournament? Guys aren't going to do that because we get paid to show up. Like, we're not betting anymore. It's not like a prize after they'll tell, like, we get booked. They'll be I mean, like you Cortez. Can still get paid, like, each member in, like, if like the backing like is there to do it all, I don't see a problem with it. Like, if you, you know? got eight of the best battle rappers out there, obviously each individual match would be a, yeah. a, a big thing as mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And then as you work Final to the four, tournament, yeah. the finals is Eminem. I, mean, I think that, that, that that's crazy. Insane. Like, I think that's crazy, but I just don't know if they'll let Eminem do it. Maybe another he, he, rapper. He might be too big. At Maybe somebody point, like so Joel Ortiz, Royce the 5'9". The yeah. guys that are still respecting him. His respect big name would make, increase the payday of everybody oh, on the roster. It would, it would. And then they could send me a check for coming <laughs> up with that idea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but that would be like right on that quick. <laughs> like M M would be crazy. Yeah. That would be everything. The world has to stop. Everyone will buy it. Pay per view yeah. will sell out. Everything. So you might blow like, up the internet. If M yeah. M saying he was coming back to, to yeah. battle. Is there, is there somebody you still would like to battle right now? Out there right now? Anybody you looking mainstream? to battle? Yeah, like mainstream, mainstream and anybody like someone mainstream I, artist? I'll take that. Let me okay. be that second check. I'll kill him. Yeah. But like there's a lot of rappers. Yeah, yeah, and, and and there's a lot of there's a lot of signed rappers that I feel can do it. Like I feel like people like a, a Fab, Fab can still do Lord it. Banks. I feel Beanie Siegel could do mm -hmm. it. I feel I don't know if Kiss could do it all the way, but I see it. If he mm -hmm. if he really pays attention, you know these guys can really do it. But even if they did some notable names that were nice, but they never really blew up, like a nature. Mm -hmm. Or some of these guys can rap. You yeah. know, I, I feel like battle rap can open up the lane where yeah, it's like them. even if you ain't sell records, you can yeah. get money. Yeah, you can get bookings. I've been to London. I've been or like you know what I mean like invited to places like Philippines, Australia, or for this. Of, yeah. They can definitely do it. They have fan bases. Yeah, you know, it's all about capitalizing and using yeah. the right strategy. And I just think now that the attention's on it, now it's expanding and people are starting to figure it out like, yo, yeah. there's some real money in this culture. Yeah, and a lot of them are not doing anything right now. Like you, some of the people you name, like, you know, they can't who's gonna book them? Like no one's gonna book no them because they're not on mainstream. That's why all these guys are so, trying to come back. That's why they're trying to come into battle rapping. Like, how do you feel about people like that coming the culture into culture vultures? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. like Bone Crusher. Yeah, <laughs> I, right, I yes. felt that was terrible. I yeah. felt like that was a disrespect yes. because a, a, even if you was to book it, you would know what you're getting already. So you're making yeah. a mockery of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know how you got two type of brandings. You might have the WWE, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, clown, but yeah. but but you know, like animated fake stories you can brand it like that battle rap like a wrestling type of thing or you could also brand it as a real street authentic boom clean cut yeah. you know like raw underground type of thing and i feel like it needs to be catered more like that that keeps it more authentic the other way it's not going to be respected as much you know or find the right blend like battle rap can't be edited if it gets on tv it needs to be on something like a hbo yeah the only way you're going to keep it raw and keep it authentic yeah. you try to water it down you try to you know, and, and do clown stuff mm -hmm. like Bone Crusher and what was it, Busy Bone yeah, and was crazy. and and uh, I was just like I was back. just like nah, I didn't even have a problem too much with the with the Keith I didn't Murray mind Keith Murray and, 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 and honestly I said okay that's one but when they started doing yeah, everybody else Crusher on the card and, and like, I was just like yeah. come on y'all y'all just violating <laughs> right now but what I, now all right because usually on the show we have a game show it's called Shot for Shot but I'm actually thinking that we should not do Shot for Shot today because. Statman has been working on his bars right now. <laughs> All right, now he's got his. He's got his. I, I, I tried to coach him. He's a, a, a beast unleashed. Cortez, are you willing to step into the ring right here live on the spot and battle <laughs> Mark the Statman? Scavenge? How many? How many bars he has? First, how many though? bars you got, Statman? <laughs> I got bars for days. <laughs> Now, <laughs> so don't worry if he's top tier, dummy. You know, that's Cortez. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta see. I gotta see. I'm, I'm thinking right now. Let me think. Let me brainstorm. We'll, I'll line them we'll, up. We'll close out of the show if anything. Ah, like say no we, more. We still got like another, t you know, 15 minutes for you to think. We'll, we'll do shot for shot. Actually, we'll have you judge 
Um, we get you to throw on a ref jersey. The way I know you used to being in the ring. All right, so how, was, how does this go? The way it works, we ask a series of five questions. Unless we go to overtime, whoever the judge agrees with gets the point. If both contestants agree, no point is awarded. The loser of Shot for Shot has to wear team apparel of a team that they hate the following week on Real Fans Real Talk. And uh, Trip Young, I believe uh, you are uh, still the reigning champion. I know we've had a, a break over yeah. the past few year weeks. We've had New Year's, we've had Christmas, so we haven't been live in a while. Um, but Trip Young is still, still the defending still champion. Down, I'm going to read the questions for you. Uh, challenger goes first. We're going to start with question number one. Will we see another team repeat as Super Bowl champions within the next decade? I mean, Seattle's looking pretty good. Uh, they, they finished off the season pretty strong. I mean, there they were a lot of questions about them earlier in the season. They got their stuff together. But it's really tough. I mean, if Seattle doesn't do it this year, I think it's going to be very hard for us to see another team repeat. A decade is a very long time, but we have, uh, after you win the Super Bowl, your schedule is extremely tough. And then you have the issues with people coming up with new contracts. Uh, star players want more money. They end up leaving. We saw a lot of players leave Oops, with yeah, uh, mm -hmm. with your, or your Baltimore Ravens, Trip Young. So uh, I, I don't think it's as easy. It was never easy in the first place, and I think it's even harder nowadays with everyone obviously worried about getting paid, and rightfully so. I, I don't think we're going to have um, another repeat in the next decade. Cause I, I'm not giving it to the to the Seahawks this year, so I think it's coming out of the AFC. It's kind of rough, but I, I, I would have to agree with the stat, man. I'm just like the Seahawks just, you know, starting the season, they beat um, Green Bay the way they did, and everybody thought they were just going to run away with their hands down, but they struggled throughout the season, and they lost at home a couple of times, and they lost badly at home. So I, I would have to agree on, on that one, stat, man. So no point is awarded on that one. We're going to okay. go to the, to the uh, next question. making your job easy so far, Cortez. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see if we can get some disagreement here. Which AFC powerhouse is more likely to be upset at home, Denver or New England? Um, I'm going with New England, actually, because of the fact that uh, Baltimore won in New England two out of the last three times they played. And the third time it was actually, I believe, a – catch away from actually winning winning that game. And actually, no, it was actually a missed field goal after that one, which was a very close field goal. But the last two times they won in uh, New England to actually go to the uh, to the Super Bowl and then won the Super Bowl. So I would have to say New England, actually. I, I don't think that Andrew Luck can beat Peyton in, uh, at, in at Denver. home in Denver. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I think that the two teams more lined up would be the uh, like more equally matched would be the Colts because the Colts are a powerhouse against Denver, but at Denver is going to be a tough one. Denver's home field is different than anybody else's with the altitude and everything. Combine that with the fact that Baltimore was able, kind of has Tom Brady's number uh, at Gillette Stadium. It's going to be a little bit rough, but uh, I do have to agree with Trip Young. So we're making your job yeah. even easier. <laughs> I know the fans yeah. don't like this, but we this don't award like ten points per question like some other shows do, and we don't give a, an advantage to the person that goes first and pretty much says everything that has to be said. So uh, moving along to question number three, over or under 40% chance Cavs coach David Blatt is fired before season's end? Um, this one goes to me. I'm going to have to say under. Uh, because I, I realize that despite all the talent that he has, he hasn't, you know, been, the Cavs haven't been the powerhouse that everyone expected them to be. But at the same time, to start from scratch <coughs> almost halfway through the season is going to be even tougher, throwing somebody new in there. It's hard enough to build chemistry as it is, as, as it goes on. We saw the first year that you put the Miami Heat together. They weren't able to do anything in the beginning, but eventually they uh, they got things together and made the NBA Finals. Lost, thankfully, 
that year to the, the Dallas Mavericks, but and we saw with the Nets um, with with Jason Kidd how they started off. You know, once mm -hmm. you throw a whole bunch of people that aren't used to playing together, playing with each other, then it, it becomes a little bit tougher. So yeah, they picked up, they got LeBron back and Kevin Love, but uh, chemistry takes a while to build. So uh, I think. Uh, to, to change coaches now is just going to take them a step backwards. So I'm going to have to say under. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. But more so, because, I know this is wrong, but more so because they just uh, got Timothy Mozgov mm -hmm. and brought him in. And I think that really kind of seals the deal that he won't be going anywhere because he was Mozgov's coach on the Russian national team. And I think he would probably be the, the person who can get the most out of Mozgov. Yeah. So I don't think that he would be going yeah, this Moskov season. Mozgov is the real deal. I'm telling you, in, in Russia, he is. I mean... But you know, that that reminds me of the trade that the Mozgov was the thing that was kind of holding Holy back. Yeah, the, yeah, the Carmelo, Carmelo trade. Anthony Anthony trade. That was yeah. crazy. But um, hey, all so right, they so knew it then. We're we're in agreement <laughs> thus far. Will Marvin Lewis be the Bengals head coach at the start of next season? Mm. As much as I feel like the Bengals would just do the dumb thing and keep him again, I gotta say no. I think he's gonna be gone. I think this was this was the last straw. Um, I mean, they they had the division lead, I think, going into week 14 strong, and then they just struggled the rest of the way out. I mean, they were just horrible in the playoffs. I know A.J. Green was there, but I, <coughs> I really didn't think it made a difference because when A.J. Green was there and they played the, the, the Colts in the regular season, it was just not a good look at all. So I would still have to say, yeah, I think they're finally smarting up and in, in find a new coach. I'm going to have our first disagreement. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say... You know, the Bengals don't have a lot of star power out there. And A.J. Green was injured for a portion of the season and their only playoff game. So this is a guy that's taken the Bengals to the playoffs and made the, you know, keeping them a playoff contender. Uh, if A.J. Green was there, would they have won the playoff game? Probably not, but it's not like he's coaching the Broncos or the Patriots or a, a team with a, a star quarterback. Um or you know a, a star running back like Demarco Murray or anything. They well, they also they, don't they have, have Bernard any, uh, who, who got wins who got under injured. And excuse me, they don't also don't have any playoff wins under Marvin Lewis either. Yeah, but you can't the, you can't really expect too much from the Bengals. That's the thing to to make the playoffs is is a is a win for the Bengals. Like you know the, they're that type of team. It's like the Eagles almost basically. Like if they make the playoffs, that's like their win, their celebration. Because a lot of times they don't make the playoffs. So. He's been there a long time. They haven't made, they haven't won to the, the play in the playoffs. When they have went to Eagles the playoffs, Eagles haven't won throughout and, their entire and they kept. And I think the, it's, it's 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 a little bit. It's, it's time. I think they they're ready to, to finally make that move. So now you have some your work cut out for you. <laughs> Man, what do I, I got to see who I agree who you, with. Who you yeah. agree with more? You think he's going to stay or go? I'll be honest with you. He has nothing to work with. He's doing a good job for something. He has nothing to work with there. So it's like, if I give you noodles and that's all you can eat that's all you can do with it you can just eat but he has nothing to work with i think what they need to do is build more chemistry with the team like okay he's doing good he lose it's like he has they been need there a for, leader for like in the over, locker room i don't eight, think it's a years. coaching change i think they just need like a more a vocal like like more leadership in the locker room to keep them together it's like they'll easily be distracted and that's a that's something the coach can instill but the players still have to want to do that but i think for what he has mm -hmm. He's been doing a great job. So it's like I think they're going to give him one more season. I think they'll give him one more season. If it, does, if, if, if it all falls apart next season, then he'll get out the door. Yeah. All right. Well, you got the lead right now, one nothing stat, man. You must have slipped Cortez that 20 before the show started. <laughs> I understand. No, 20 wasn't enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He was top 10 in the battle rap so. Over under three years before Tony Romo wins another playoff game, I will have to say over because <laughs> it's infinity. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's man. the Giants' hate in me. I mean, but but at the same time you have you have the Packers they're just a powerhouse. I mean you know even you know even if Aaron Rodgers uh, does get hurt, we saw Flynn come in and he could play. So with that Packers offense. So but I think that 
Aaron Rodgers will, will still come through, and I, I think the Packers plus at home at Lambeau Field, they're going to lose this year. Then you've got the Giants taking their rightful spot back on the top next year because you're going to have Cruz back healthy. Odell Beckham Jr. is going to play a full year as opposed to missing the entire month of September and still pretty much being all on the top uh, top four of rookies all yeah. time, even without missing, four, even yeah, with yeah. missing four games. So you're going to have Cruz, Beckham, uh, Randall starting to show up. So Eli Manning is going to have some weapons next year. You see what, what, what Odell Beckham can do. And a full season with a healthy roster, Giants go right back on top, and uh, Cowgirls go right back to the bottom where they belong. So <laughs> Now, as a Giants fan myself, no, I'm the, I would I would love for that to happen. I do think the Giants will get back. But we're talking about now Tony Romo not only losing this weekend's game, which I feel like he will unless Aaron Rodgers isn't isn't healthy. But now the Cowgirls not making the playoffs for another three years. Well, not winning and the him not games. and him not or not, winning, not getting they, and they, well, they if he doesn't go, make, he can't. They might he can't, make a wild card game, but they're not going to win another. Playoff but game. I think no, I think that I think they're taking one. They actually because they actually have a very good offense with Des Bryant and Demarco, well, DeMarco Murray this Murray's season. Been that, Work that this he year. has We've seen what yeah. happened with running backs when so, you put the full load on them for a year, they're never the same again. So, well, he had the full load on him last year. I mean, they didn't make the playoffs last year, but they made it this year. I think that many carries, I just said three years under 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 three years, over three years. So, you're talking about maybe at least four years now. Nah, I think he'll, he'll only get a second a, in his career, he'll get a, he'll get a he'll get a, another another win in less than in three years. In less than three years, one one, he's right. All right. So now but it's like it's like you you know if you said to, if you said for this weekend then it's something different. Three seasons. That's not only two more seasons. Game, not winning he, one he's, game. He's went more than two without. He's gonna get one. He's gonna get one. He's gonna get one. The odds are he's gonna. He's get He's gonna one. be a wild card the next two years if if that. Nah, he still has a chance to win though. I, I mean, they had the win. best season in a long time. Dallas just lucked up. Even with Philly like having their struggles at the end of the season and everything, Dallas shouldn't even been in the playoffs. I don't think so. They played. I mean, they played. I mean, they Dallas went into Seattle and beat the Seahawks that this was, season. That was that was something that that not too many teams <laughs> could do. When Dallas and wins, dominated them. It wasn't when, even like it was a close one. When Dallas wins, it's like, and I don't and, even like Dallas. It's always an upset for me. Like you know, I don't. <laughs> I don't really have any faith or trust in the Cowboys. Cowgirls, I should say. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're all yeah. Real yeah. Exactly. Finally, you got finally you got it. You got it right. You got it right. Yeah. So, hold on. Do you have an overtime question for us? Um, Overtime question. Nothing involving the Knicks because we know yeah, how it's going to turn out. He just disagreed because oh, it was man. the last question. He got lucky. but No, yeah. But um, overtime question. Do you think the Cavaliers will win the NBA championship or... Do you think the somebody else? Well, <laughs> the Cavaliers will win NBA uh, or someone else or the the, the field over That's under. Easy overtime. <laughs> yeah, I, and as much as as I would like to say yes to that, I can't say yes because I haven't seen how they're gonna all play <laughs> together. So I can't I can't give them the championship. Do I think they can make it to the finals? Yes, because they're in the because Eastern Conference. But I can't say that the, I can't give them the I can't give them the NBA NBA Finals because I don't know how they're gonna play together. Let me reiterate that better chance of winning an NBA championship the Cavaliers or the Memphis Grizzlies. Cavaliers because yeah, of Cavaliers. the fact that one I don't know if the Grizzlies can make it to the finals in the Western Conference, so I gotta go with the Cavs. Yeah, I, I agreed right away. Oh, so. man. <laughs> Let's put the seating with that question. Yeah. So let's see if the judge <laughs> has a, a question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, let's run through uh, this day in sports history. Cortez, use your See. creativity for So you can overtime think of another overtime question. question. You can come up with one. Uh, this day in sports history in 1955, Georgia Tech ends Kentucky's 130-game home basketball win streak. This day in 1993, Chicago Bull Michael Jordan scored his 20 thousandth career point all right and this day in 1995 mike schmidt is elected to baseball's hall of fame 
And uh, happy birthday to Rey Mysterio, the, uh, the wrestler for those of you uh, WWE <coughs> fans out there, and uh, Carl Pavano, uh, the baseball player. So shout out to them and happy birthday. So Cortez, you ready for this overtime yeah. question? Yeah. This is live on the spot. Now freestyle. I'm a, now I'm a Knicks fan. <laughs> now I'm a Knicks fan. Oh, so, God. Right, thanks for <laughs> helping me out. This is what I'm going to ask you guys. Do you think the trade this week, freeing up the cap space, $30 million in space, Seems like they're tanking it for a lottery pick. Do you feel like this is all a part of the plan and it's actually going to draw free agents this offseason? Now, think about what free agents are really available. It's not much. Mm -hmm. And do you think this was the right move? Like, do you think this was the right move in order to attract we, free we, agents? We, we kind of touched on this before you got yeah. to the program, but uh, that was one of our fan mail questions as well, kind of along those lines. I feel that, yes, they are tanking the season. Uh, I named some of the big-name free agents that come to mind. Uh, Marcus Saul is one of them. Rajon Rondo is another one. LaMarcus Aldridge is another one. Those are three really big names. There's a possibility that they could get two of those. Rondo, who's the, the Knicks are, you know, a point guard is something that I I think they've needed for a while. Well, Calderon is doing okay, but at the same time, uh, Rondo is obviously a tremendous upgrade and might actually build a little bit more chemistry than uh, Carmelo running isolation the whole time. So I do agree with the move because at the record as it is two weeks ago, not even forget about now, at the record as it was two weeks ago, Look at what what would they have to do to get to the eight seed? When you do the math, there it's it's pretty it's a pretty tough thing. So what are you going to finish ninth, tenth, and then get a lower draft pick? I think using Philadelphia seventy sixers strategy of tanking is a good move, and it seems like that's what they're doing. I mean, Melo's not not going to be playing. Uh, to rest up, so he's going to be healthier next year. Some of the lagging injuries, not risking a long term injury. So uh, that's what I, how I feel. Yeah, I mean, I would have to agree. I mean, you're talking about the opportunity to get the uh, number one let's, draft pick. Let's move along. Wait, 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 wait. Some time. So question is, though, do you think, the, is it going to attract the free agents? Not is it a good move, well, but is it, it actually going to solidify? Not only that, but it's also it the fact that Phil Jackson is there and yeah. his name in itself, it will, you know, the players are going to want to play. Okay, that's know, what so. I want to know. I want to know if that's Mello, enough to attract yeah. It will. Do we need another question? Because I think I have a good one. Okay, all right. And this is the, I can di agree or disagree with you guys. Who do you think is going to come out of the Western Conference and be in, in, in the championship for the West? Who has a better chance? You know what? It's actually kind of kind of rough if you think about it, but it's possible that there's a couple of teams that could do it. We need so one. We, we, need, we need one yeah. from you. But you know, we can actually every single team that makes the playoffs. We could scare everyone in the West. But yeah. the, the thing is, is that we that like there could be a situation where you have Golden State at the number one and OKC managing to get into the eighth seed in the playoffs, and where you could have OKC actually knock off Golden State in the first round of the playoffs, which wouldn't be surprising to me. So I would have to say to come out of the West, though. <laughs> <sighs> Tough, bro. Well. I, mean, I, I don't believe in the Clippers in the pick playoffs. One. You got to pick, gotta one. pick a team, brother. Ah, you got you five believe seconds. In Memphis? I don't believe in Memphis either. Believe in Golden State? I mean, I believe in Golden State more than Memphis. You believe in Dallas? And. Oh, it's Dallas is okay, the see, I'm just going, you know, the help. I don't, I don't even believe in Dallas in, in the playoffs. Honestly, I might, I might have to to go back with San Antonio again. I honestly, I just feel like they're the one team where you know they get all the kinks out early in the season. Popovich is one of the best coaches in the NBA. He knows how to rest his players, you know, at the right times and doesn't care about, you know, they had the little fine situation last season when, when they played the Heat during the regular season and rested everybody. But I feel like they're actually the strongest team in, in the playoffs than any of these other teams and because of the fact that OKC is going to be trailing and coming in at a, at a, at, from the bottom, I feel like they can knock off one of those powerhouses at the top, either the Clippers or, or Golden State or, or Memphis, whichever one of those teams may get the, the first or the second seed. So you're going with the Spurs? So I got I, I to go with the Spurs, okay, man. Okay, man. Oh, man, this is the, the <laughs> toughest question in sports, <laughs> yeah. I think, really. Yeah. But Shout out I, to Khalil, I, man. Um... Rondo to the Mavs, I think I, I, I think Cortez pointed out the Mavs, and I, I agree with that. I think, you know, that 
I know he said he's a sleeper, and that's not his official pick, so I'm not just saying that. I think that after the moves that they made, they they got a great player in every position, and they've been there before. They got a great coach, and I think that, you know, they got Rondo, even though it's only for this year. I think that, you know, they got it because they feel that they can win a championship there, so. So who are you picking? Dallas. Dallas? Yep. To come out of, or San Antonio? Ah. <sighs> They got. The, they both got the coaching, but I think you know. Um, I think Dallas has a little bit more talent. Yeah, the, hey, I, I keep saying the Spurs are too old, talent. but yeah, well, Dallas. I, mean, Rondo, I don't know if Rondo really if pushed them over San enough Antonio. to get them to the finals. So that would be. I don't. I don't know if he necessarily puts them over. Well, the hump, both man. of you. I, I don't uh, really well, like both of you. Judge has to make his decision. So uh, it was between I'm that. Be honest or with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. Dallas. Dallas. I like Dallas. Dallas, before the trade, had the highest offensive efficiency in the league. That people were people were talking about their offense like, whoa, they about to average the most in, in team history in NBA history. You get me? Um, the one thing I think they were weak at was the point guard position. They bring a lot more stability to Monte Ellis because now you have a point guard that's not gonna just jack up shots. All yeah. right. Well, we are running out of time, so unfortunately. Oh, you, 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 he won. you don't have to. Yeah, won, unfortunately. I did lose one. Well, I, I won, but I, I wanted to win the battle rap with the two, but, you know, we don't have time for that today. But I know but next time I'm going to the URL out, website, I'm just my bias now. I'm going to vote the other way. <laughs> check, <laughs> what? check out the Bowling for Peace uh, tournament. Uh, Cortez will be there. Maybe we'll yeah. have the battle rap between Statman and Cortez. Yeah, we can do that at halftime. At halftime. Cortez is going to be good man. We're going to have some time to prepare because we're going to go today, go today, if, uh, make sure you follow the, the Instagram and Twitter, Cortez <laughs> underscore HSP, Cortez Politics at gmail.com. Let's work. Let's build. I do it. I love working. This is what I do. It's a blessing. And hold on real quick. H205 on Instagram. Twitter. I still use my Twitter. Stargrave3. Um, hit me up on Facebook. Haran Hargrave. And um, all my information for Balling for Peace is up there. But you can go to uh, ballingforpeace.eventbrite.com. Dot com and get your tickets. There's still some tickets available, but y'all guys gotta hurry up and cop them because then things are moving it's fast. Gonna be crazy. Right? It's gonna be a movie out there. Remember, I'm gonna put up 40 points, 65 rebounds, 17 assists, and one steal. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Hart step. numbers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. So for Tripion Cortez, H2O, I'm Mark the Statman Scavage. Thank you all for joining us and have a good night, everyone. Peace. Peace out. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com, I'm out one. Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk, real fans.